seen me build the base for the CNC machine here in the CNC room or dust room or sanding room or what you want to call it. This table is built to the specs so it, I can fit my new CNC machine also. But for now I have my old DIY CNC machine standing here. This CNC machine has its own build series uh, on my YouTube channel. I make a lot of mistakes uh, while I build this one and I learn from my mistakes and I fix the mistakes I do. I recommend you go back and check out some of those videos. In order for me to be able to build my new CNC machine, I have to get this old one up and running because I'm going to use this machine to make parts for my new machine. This old machine works quite good. I've been very pleased with it. Even though it's made out of softwood and it's quite flimsy, it has served me very well and I have learned very much from building this thing. Everything from the electronics with the stepper motors, everything with the linear bearings, the linear rails, the spindle itself, or in this case the Makita router. Also I made this electronics box. As I said, it's been a very long time since I used this machine. I know there are some faulty circuits that I have to fix. Most of the faulty circuits are in these uh, plugs. These are uh, multi-connector plugs. So the plan now is to get the old CNC machine up and running. I have this computer monitor stand. Room for two monitors uh, on this one. This is some sort of uh, temporary solution because when I build my new CNC machine, I want to make a new solution for the electronics box and the computer. And I was thinking about putting it somewhere around here. So that's the first thing to figure out. Yeah, as you can see, my electronics box has seen better days. <laughs> After the initial workshop move I had to hook up the CNC machine because I had to use it for a small job. In that process I managed to sh short circuit two wires and that resulted in these two TB6500s to lose its uh, smoke and not work anymore. I used a lot of time to figure out what was wrong but in the end these two were gone. So I switched them out with some new TB6600s. These are meant to be used on my new CNC machine. I also found a fault on one of the wires. That's why I put in this uh, black wire here instead of the grey ones. So I had two problems that was mixed and combined into one problem. So I used a lot of time to figure it out. But anyhow, this is how the box looks today. I know it uh, doesn't look good. I'm not going to use this small box for the new CNC machine. I have learned and figured out it's wise to have a box or electronics box that's bigger. This way it's much easier to research the faults if you get any faults in your system. When it's like this, when you're searching after a fault, you get chaos like this. For now I'm going to use this box. I'm just going to hook up everything and check that every axis is working like it should. Okay, so now I have hooked up everything here. The computer is hooked up, the screen, the CNC machine is hooked up, but I have not turned it on yet. So let's do that. The first thing I do is turn on the electronics box. Okay, I can hear the power turns on and I can hear the stepper motors uh, also power on. Let's check the CNC machine. Okay, so the first thing I do on the computer is to go into the UGS platform software. Let me see if you get this on the screen recording. I don't think so. I'll take it down on this screen. So here we have the UGS platform. Let's try to check out which COM port I'm connected at. Looks like it's COM port 9. I will try to connect. It says that it's connected. Now let's try the Y axis. Oh, 
Oh yeah, it seems to work. Let's try the X axis. Yeah, that also seems to work. Now let's try the Z axis. Oh. There is no reaction on the Z axis. I also have no holding power on the Z axis stepper motor. All the other stepper motors have hold power. So something is wrong with this set axis. I'll just have to check on all my wiring and uh, come back to you. Okay, I hope I found the fault here now. This is the stepper motor controller for the set axis. When I plugged it out, I saw that the wire was loose. So as you can see, the ground wire for the set axis stepper motor controller has gotten loose from the other one here. So I'm just going to hook this up and try again. When I hooked it up here, I heard the Z-axis stepper motor got the holding power it needs. Now when I try to rotate the Z-axis screw, it holds and I cannot move it. That means this stepper motor now has holding power. the old CNC machine up and running. It's on its own table here. I have wired up all the mains I need, 230 volts, going down to the machine here and down to the computer, which is on its own stand here. I've tested everything now and uh, all the functions, all the axes works like they should do. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, enjoy watching my progress with my machines and uh, CNC machines and stuff like that. I also do other stuff, so check out the videos you see on the sides here. And until next time, good bye.